couch Dogs, me, guitar lessons Hey there, Lickin' Riffers, how are you doing? Welcome to another awesome installment in the never-ending fingerstyle rhythm pattern and exercise video series all designed to make you a better fingerstyle player and overall musician. Every week we alternate between beginner, intermediate and advanced fingerstyle lessons. This week it's time for another advanced lesson, so I've got something really, really spectacular for you to learn this time. Um, it's gonna sound scary and complicated at first, but bear with me, it's really a lot simpler than you think, and you've got me to show you the ropes and guide you through it. We're gonna learn harmonized scales. We're gonna learn the C major and E major scales harmonized by an octave and a third. Sounds really fancy, and it sounds awesome. It creates instant polyphonic melodies. Polyphony is when you play two different melodies at the same time. So if you've ever seen a finger stylist or a classical player play two different melodies at the same time, this is one of the techniques they're using. Um, one of the main ones actually. So we're gonna learn the C major scale harmonized by uh, an octave and a third and also the E major scale because those two mesh up really nicely and then you can take them and improvise with them and compose with them and it will make you seem like an expert on the guitar even if you have no idea what you're doing except for repeating what I'm showing you. So the C major scale harmonized by an octave and a third sounds like this. scale sounds like this pretty cool right already sounds like two different melodies two different distinct melodies the secret to this is that we're playing the root of the chords of the scale and the major or minor thirds the notes that make them major or minor chords but because we're not playing the full chords we're playing the separate notes and they're separated not by a third they're separated by an octave and a third for example let's start the c major scale um we start with e minor okay because our lowest note is e um and we play open third and open sixth rings okay now um this is e this is the octave and this is the minor third that makes the chord a minor. So we're playing the third and the root. Now, when you play the uh, root and the third, an octave and the third higher, then it's just far enough apart to create the, the illusion that you're playing two separate melodies instead of a chord. And that's the reason that this is a lot simpler than it sounds. So open third and sixth strings, then for F, you play two on the third string and one on the bass. Okay, you can do it with your thumb. Then for G, you play the open second string and three on the bass. For A minor, you play one on the second string, open fifth. For G again, this time G over B, you play three on the second string and two on the fifth. Okay, this is G over B because this is a G chord this is inside the G chord. So G over B, you start from the B, um, the B note is your root note now. It's an inversion of the G chord. Then for C, you play the open E string and three on the fifth string. For D minor, you play one on the E string and the open fourth. And for E minor again, you play three on the E string, two on the fourth. Okay, now you can go on. Okay? But this is easier and I want to show you the way that really uses your fingers and makes you look really really good to whomever stands um, before you and looks at you playing because you want their jaw to drop. Um, so um, again, E minor, F, G, A minor, G over B, or B half diminished but let's call this um, G over B because you know you've got this also. So. Uh, G over B, C, D minor, E minor again. For the E major scale, you play the major third of E, so you play one on the third string and the open 
E bass string. Then you play two and two on strings three and six for F sharp minor or D over F sharp. Then you play, you can play uh, four and four on the same two strings, three and six, or you can play four on the bass and the open second string. Then you have A major, so you play two on the second string and the open fifth string. Then you have B, so you play four on the second string and two on the fifth string. Then you play four on the fifth string and the open E string. And then you play two on the E string and the open D string for D. And for E again, you play four on E and two on the fourth string, D. Right? So this is the E major scale. One and zero, two and two, four and four, or the open second string with four on the bass. Two on the second string with the A bass for A major. Then the same uh, set of strings on four and two for B. Then C sharp minor, E, uh, the E string, and four on the A string. And for D, you have two and zero on strings one and four. Then for E again, you have four and two on the same two strings. So. Now the reason that I'm showing you these two scales is that they mesh up very, very well. You can play uh, the C scale with, uh, with D instead of D minor. You can play E major instead of E minor. You can play D over F sharp instead of F. And then you get a lot of variations. You can also play C and then instead of A minor play A and see how that sounds. So um, again, it's because the notes are just far enough apart to create two distinct melodies instead of chords. And then the scale change um, is actually interesting instead of sounding like a mistake. Let me try and show you um, a bit of improv here, but let me just assure you, Start with the scales and then just take a couple of notes and start playing with the rhythm. Then make small jumps, then make larger jumps. Okay, I'm gonna try and do that. I'm gonna repeat notes and then I'm gonna start making jumps so you can see the process uh, I'm trying to, um, to show you. thought just occurred to me that you don't have to play them together. You can do something like this. Okay? And that creates more layers of depth. Starting with A minor, G, and F, just close chords. instead of A. Don't be 
afraid to experiment. Okay, stuff like that. Start simple, then try to make larger jumps. And as you get used to this, you'll see that you come up with more and more complex melodies and then try to separate the notes and then try to come up with more complex rhythms. Uh, I was just showing you the basics because um, I know this takes time to digest uh, and memorize, but I'm pretty sure you can do it. If you're watching this lesson, then you pretty much can do anything. So um, I don't know what that line meant, but I'm, I stand behind it. So before you go practice this, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. I've got a ton of free lessons already up and I upload a new one every couple of days or so. In the description, you'll find the tab. You'll find the link to the tab in the website. The tab is for free, just like anything else here on Lick and Riff. There's lessons, all the tabs, everything for free. But if you want to give something back, there's a large blue donation button right above the tab. You can't miss it. And everything goes right back into Lick and Riff, into these lessons, into your guitar education. So I thank you in advance for any donation you choose to make. Make. You go practice this, have fun, impress the heck out of everyone watching, uh, and just improvise, compose, and have a lot of fun with this technique. I'm happy that you know it. So uh, I'll see you in the next lesson. Feel free to share this one, and uh, thanks for watching. Bye for now.